In this video, we are going to talk about all you need to know about Congo. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. If the Democratic Republic of Congo conjures images of dripping jungles inhabited by gorillas, warlords, and the Ebola virus, you're getting only a tiny part of the picture. Here are the some facts you need to know about Congo. So let's start. Number 10. Music is its biggest export. Top artists like Kofi Olamide, Papa Wemba, and Werison can fill clubs from Johannesburg to Paris as fast as Justin Bieber. African rumba, sukus and ndombolo music are complemented by different dances. Wendo Kalasoy began his seven-decade career singing while working on Congo River cruise ships. His melodies, like the mega-hit Marie Louise, inspired millions of couples throughout the continent to dance. The musicians also influenced the well-dressed sapers. Even at night, sapers must wear the finest European cut suits, Italian leather shoes, and sunglasses. If you see a yellow Ferrari on the streets of Kinshasa, it's probably a top sapper driving it. Number 9. The Concorde was a regular visitor to Congolese jungle. Batalites Concorde Airfield was built. And it came often. Mobutu Sisi Siko built one of Africa's longest airstrips to park his sleek supersonic plane in his jungle-carved French town near the Abangui River. Batalite is a strange town. In the 1960s, wide boulevards were carved out of the tropical bush near Mobutu's hometown. Batalite has slowly regained lost areas since Mobutu fled advancing rebel forces in 1997. Number 8. Kinshasa is world's second-largest French-speaking city. Kinshasa is the world's second-largest French-speaking metropolis behind Paris. Nobody knows how many people dwell in Kinshasa, but a safe estimate would be around 10 million. The number of people fleeing war in other parts of the country has increased considerably in 15 years. Kinshasa's French-language credentials permitted it to host the Summit of Law Francophonie in October 2012, the world's largest meeting of French-speaking leaders. The baguettes and croissants in the city surpass those on the view continent. Number 7. The Congo played role in World War II. The uranium for the Manhattan Project came from the Shinkalabwe mine in Katanga Province. It had been closed since 1939 when the U.S. military reopened it. Colonel Ken Nichols negotiated for the acquisition of almost 4,000 tons of uranium or from the mine, transferring a fourth of it to a Staten Island warehouse for use in the project. Before the war ended, the Americans bought 30,000 tons. Number 6. Locals eat mayo with everything. The overwhelming fondness for big gobs of mayonnaise on practically everything is a remnant of Belgian colonial rule. Many prefer it with the hot native chili sauce called as piri piri, or pepper pepper in Swahili. This cools the pepper and flavors the mayo, making a great combo. Many outstanding, reasonably priced Lebanon eateries due to the huge Lebanese population. Indian is the same. Number 5. Kinshasa and Brazzaville are the world's closest capitals. The world's nearest capitals are Kinshasa and Brazzaville in the Republic of Congo. The Congo River, the world's second largest by volume, separates them by 5 kilometers, 3 miles. There's been discussion of building a bridge between the two cities for decades, but commerce is still via boat. Passengers can pick between a more luxurious and peaceful speedboat ride or one of the crowded boats. Ferries transport flour, dried fish, vehicles, and furniture. Disabled people can cross for free and are heavily involved in the product's trade. Number 4. The wildlife is phenomenal. The okapi is one of 1,500 indigenous animals to the Congo. It lives in the remote Ituri forest in the country's northeast. This forest giraffe is 6 feet tall at the head and 5 feet at the shoulder. The reserve on the Epula River is home to 5,000 okapis, 4,000 elephants, 2,000 leopards, and many more species. Several civil wars have decimated the human and animal populations, but the reserve has been mostly safe for the last few years. Number 3. The Congo isn't overrun by the Ebola virus. Films like Outbreak and Congo have propagated the myth that Ebola is as simple to catch as a cold in New York. There have been epidemics in the country, 
most notably in Kikwit in 1995, which killed 200 people, but they were rapidly suppressed and are now rare. Ebola is exceedingly dangerous and is spread to people by infected meat. Many Congolese outside the cities rely on bushmeat for protein, and public health initiatives are ongoing to warn them of the dangers. Number 2. Potential to be tourist paradise. Sadly, the East is today known for warlords, rebel groups, and mining disputes. Until the 1990s, the region was a popular tourist attraction. North and South Kivu's provincial capitals, Goma and Bukavu, are on Lake Kivu. The Virunga Mountains surround Goma, evoking images of alpine lakes in Europe. Virunga National Park to the north and Kahuzi Biega National Park beyond Bukavu. The UNESCO Sites The Virunga National Park has habitats ranging from lowland plains to the 5,000-meter high Rwenzori Mountains, more than 16,000 feet. Both the Niragongo and the Nyamuladra volcanoes are active in this region. The Kahuzi Biega National Park is home to one of the last eastern lowland guerrilla troops. Number 1. Hotel sector is decent, growing, and expensive. Kinshasa had only two international hotels until 10 years ago, the Memling and the Grand Hotel, which used to be an intercontinental. This hotel is owned by SN Brussels Airlines and the Congolese government. Angolan, Namibian, and Zimbabwean forces dispatched to support Laurent Kabila's administration were billeted at the Grand Hotel after Mobutu's ouster in 1997. Antelopes were often seen running through hotel corridors back then. The Grand Hotel is currently undergoing a much-needed facelift, and its guests are mostly businessmen. Meanwhile, as international businesspeople come to the country, at least six additional decent hotels, ranging from expensive to basic, have been built in the capital. Budget travelers will be disappointed. Generally, hotel rooms in Kinshasa cost between $150 and $200 per night, with some exceeding $300. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.